Sometimes, translators are like this guy. They get bogged down in some of the little details and forget the main point of the story that they're translating. Sometimes, translators are like this guy too. He has concentrated so much on getting the eye just right that he has lost sight of the person's whole face and how the eye fitted in. How could those guys have done it right? Beautiful driving. He remembered everything, the gears, the blinkers, the windscreen wiper, looking out of the rear vision mirror, watching for stray dogs, etc. But at the same time, he kept his eye on the road. Wow, look at the difference when the artist stands back and looks at the whole. We translators have got to be like that too. We have to keep the whole storyline in mind as we work on the details. You gotta think about the commas and the full stops too. You gotta think about each word, yeah, that you gotta do. But you can't lose sight of the whole storyline. At all times, man, you gotta keep that in mind. How can we do this? First, we have to read the story several times and get to know it really well. Also, we have to understand the purpose of the story. Maybe it is to tell about something funny that happened, to amuse and entertain people. Ow! Dumb! Don't the second country! In this story, the storyteller is telling how a white man went hunting with them. Just as they were stalking a kangaroo, he stepped on a thorn and called out in pain and off went the kangaroo. Or maybe the storyteller is giving a warning. Now, Barry and Johnny, you must not go along the water. Bunny flip there. What he look like? We in Marwat. Or it could be that the person is trying to get across a strong message. There's no one else in this country treated in such a humiliating way. We need a permit to go on and off the mission. We need a permit to visit our relatives. We need a permit to see the doctor. Our endowments are controlled by the manager. He tells us where we must buy our rations. Instead of butter, we get rancid fat and the flowers full of weevils. And if that's what they call protection, then we don't want it. Or the purpose of the story might be to teach, to encourage, to growl, to describe, to explain. Whatever the purpose is, we have to understand it. Stories can be told in many different ways. Sometimes it seems we're working in a rather complex maze. We need to keep in mind the purpose of the tale. Listen as I talk about the story of the whale. Now the story could be told with the purpose of instruction as an academic lecture on whale reproduction. Or simply as a means to amuse and entertain. Or even as a song with a rousing refrain. It could describe a whale from Gossel Finn to Spout. It could explain in detail how a whale breathes out. The story could be told in a sermon or a speech. The single purpose being to inform and teach. When you're doing translation, don't forget to ask. Why the author of the story undertook the task Who was meant to hear it and in what situation To understand the purpose makes for good Translation Okay Once you have worked out the purpose of the story The next thing to do is to work out What are the main points of the story Who are the main people And what are the main things To help you keep the storyline in mind Listen to this short story from Luke's Gospel, chapter 10, verses 30 to 35. And Jesus said, There was once a man who was going from 
Jerusalem to Jericho, when robbers attacked him, stripped him and beat him up, leaving him half dead. It so happened that a priest was going down that road, but when he came to the man, he walked on by on the other side. In the same way, a Levite also came along, went over and looked at the man, and then walked on by on the other side. But a Samaritan who was traveling that way came upon the man, and when he saw him, his heart was filled with pity. He went over to him, poured oil and wine on his wounds and bandaged him. Then he put the man on his own animal and took him to an inn where he took care of him. The next day he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper. Take care of him, he told the innkeeper, and when I come back this way, I will pay you whatever you spend on him. There are quite a few people mentioned in this story. The traveler, the robbers, the priest, a Levite, a man from Samaria called a Samaritan, and the innkeeper. But not all those people are the main people in the story. The only ones we could call main ones are the traveler and the Samaritan. The rest were there, but they didn't play as important a part in the story. The main things in this story are the oil and the wine, the medicine which the Samaritan man used, and the donkey he put the traveler onto to get him to the inn. And the main points, or the main things that happened in the order in which they happened. Let's see. One, a traveler was attacked by robbers and left injured on the road. Two, a priest came by, but he walked on, on the other side of the road. Three, a Levite came by, but he also walked by on the other side. Four, a Samaritan came by. He felt sorry for the injured traveler and helped him, putting medicine on his wounds. Five, he put him on his own animal and took him to an inn. And six, he left money with the innkeeper to care for him. The other thing we need to know is where and when this story happened. It tells us at the beginning of the story, on the road between Jerusalem and Jericho. And when? It was a story Jesus told to answer a teacher of the law when he tried to trap him. Jesus told this story, one happening after another, in order from beginning to end. When you are translating, don't do it word by word. If you do it that way, it'll sound absurd. We translate the meaning, that's the major point, or else our message will be sadly out of joint. First, work out the meaning so you know what it is, then translate the same meaning. Man, you can't miss. The next thing we need to do is to see how the different parts of a story are joined together. Sometimes a storyteller tells things in the order they happen. Sometimes he turns them around. See if you can pick it. Look at these two sentences about Roger. Roger got a stomachache. Roger ate some pie. In English, we could join these up in several different ways. For example, we could say, Poor Roger. He ate some pie and then got stomachache. Another way of saying this with the same meaning would be, Poor Roger. He got a stomachache after he ate some pie. Or we could join the sentences up so that there is a different meaning. Greedy Roger. He had a stomachache, but still he ate some pie. Or maybe Roger thinks he'd like a day off work, so he gets a plan in his mind. This means we join the sentences up differently again. We could say, clever Roger. He ate some pie so he could get a stomachache. 
These are just short sentences about an apple pie and a stomachache. But we have to understand how joining words have been used in English so we can get over the same meaning in a clear way for our own language. We have to do the same thing with a longer story. Work out how the parts of the story fit together so we can see where the storyline is going. You gotta think about the commas and the full stops too. You gotta think about each word, yeah, that you gotta do. But you can't lose sight of the whole storyline. At all times, man, you gotta keep that in mind. Well, you have finished your translation and you are sure you have the story straight. Don't be too sure. Now we need help from other people in the community. It is really important to check your translation with people of different ages, the old, the middle-aged and the young. When we want to make a language straight, we have to go to the camp and do a check with the people in the camp, read out the translation what we've done, then we check it with them and also with older people. It's a very good idea to check with them, make sure they are happy with their translation work. We must be true to the message, must be clear as well, the sound right in the language, it must be natural. When we go out to the people, we, we ask them questions about the section that we've, um, we've translated. And we ask them that question, how well they've understood that text. And if the answer they give us is, is to the point, then we, that's telling us that the translation we've done is really, really good, and it's clear. You can also read the translation to them, or let them read it themselves, and then ask them to tell you back the story in their own words. Then you'll be able to tell if the main points are coming through and fit together properly. If they don't, fix it up. Then you'll be sure that your language is straight and that your translation is a goer. There are lots of messages that are so important they are translated into many languages. Marichu was encouraged by a story he heard of people who read a message in their own language. It's a story that how the German army came and Air Force and really dropped bombs over Poland, Warsaw, which is the capital of Poland during the World War II. And the people of that place were just scattered all over. And finally when the war was declared over, they came back to their place only to see the place in ruins and that really broke their spirits and they were really in a mess. As they were coming closer, they saw this old warehouse and on the wall there was a writing on it. It said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. And it was in their own language and they came back and really built up that place and it gave them the strength to, to really come back and build up that place. There was tremendous joy in their spirits, in their hearts. So upon hearing that story, it was really a turning point. I saw how much, how important is the Word of God to be in our language so that it will help us to, to become the people that God meant us, 
who, who wants us to be. And that story is really a powerful story.